Welcome to Jesus is Lord Church. We're so excited that you've chosen to worship with us today. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you stop by our Connect station for more information. Are you ready to be empowered by the Word of God and shake this nation for Jesus Christ? Join Pastor Kevin McGinnis every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for Empowered Live. For more information, visit www.jilc.org. Are you ready for a little pick-me-up to help you get through your work week? Join us every Thursday for Jesus is Lord midweek service at 7 p.m. For more information, visit us at the Connect Station. There is power in prayer. Make sure to join us on the first Friday of every month for Fire Friday Prayer. Services begin at 8 p.m. Calling all teenagers ages 13 to 19. Are you ready to show the next generation the love of God? Join our Empower Youth Services on the second Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m. Young adults ages 20 to 40, are you committed to creating a culture that connects and cares? Join us for our next Young Adult Night on the third Friday of every month. Services begin at 7 p.m. Make sure to join us every Saturday at 12 noon at the Patchogue train station for Jesus is Lord Church Saturday Evangelism. Jesus is Lord Church. Each one, reach one.
Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast right here at the place where souls of one mercy is extended and miracles happen. I'm Pastor Kevin McGinnis, and I want you to get ready. Today's word is going to bless your life. Help us right now. Make an impact on the earth that echoes on through eternity. See that little button? Hit it right now. Share so others can experience the love and the power of Jesus Christ. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. We thank you, Jesus, to serve you, God. We thank you, Jesus, for another day to glorify your name, God. We thank you, Jesus, for you alone are holy, God. Holy are you, Lord God. Hallelujah in the highest, God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah means praise the Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for every victory, God. We thank you, Jesus, right now for the air that we breathe, Lord God. We just worship you, Lord God. We take the time out to praise you, Lord God. For you are the light of the world, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for every stripe, Lord God. We heal, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for the blood, Jesus, that washes us. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy, God. Come on. Lift up a worship. Lift up a praise unto the Father. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for your nail-pierced hands, God, for your blood that cleanses us, God, for your blood that washes white as snow, God. We thank you, Jesus. We raise the standard in this place, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for every perfect gift comes from you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By your stripes, we are healed. By your nail pierced wounds, we're free. By your blood, we're washed clean. Now we have the victory.
Jesus, where will we be? So we worship you, we give you praise tonight, oh God. Come on and lift up your voice in this place. Come on and lift your voice in this place. We worship you, Lord. You're so worthy, Jesus, of all the glory, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Oh.
just you. You are the risen King. Can we say this? Death could not hold you down. Let's say that one more time. Death could not hold you down. See, death could not hold you. Death could not hold you down. Death could not hold you. Death could not hold you down. See, you are the reason. You are the reason, King. See, you are the reason, King. You are the reason, King. See, you are the reason. You Come on and worship him in this place. Come on and shout unto God. Come on and give him glory. This we worship you, Jesus. For we are worthy, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Come on and lift up your voice in this place. Come on and lift up a praise. Come on and raise a hallelujah in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. For it hasn't been for you, oh Father. Where will we be tonight, oh God? Let there never be a day, oh God, that I don't rise to bring you praise. So we shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, King Jesus. We worship you, King Jesus. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. Our weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. 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 Sing a
Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Let's sing a little louder. 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 Shout 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 a little louder.
Hallelujah. Anybody came expecting anything tonight? Anybody came expecting a miracle? Anybody came expecting a breakthrough tonight? Hallelujah. Father God, we cry out for miracles, signs, and wonders. And we shout unto you tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody came for a breakthrough tonight? A breakthrough in their heart, a breakthrough in their mind, a breakthrough in their soul, their spirit. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can we clap our hands like this? Break through in my 
of his people. Somebody give God praise and give him glory. Come on, give him glory all over this room. Give him glory. Give him praise. Another day to serve him. Another day to worship him. Another day to glorify him. Another day to lift our hands and thank him for all the great things that he has done in our lives. Come on, praise him for what he's done. Praise him for what he's done in your life. Praise him for what he's done in your life. I'll give you another opportunity to praise him for all that he's done in your life. Praise him for what he's doing. Praise him for what he's getting ready to do. Can somebody clap your hands and give him praise and glory? Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Now lift your hands. Say, I'm ready for a breakthrough. A breakthrough in my family. A breakthrough in my finances. A breakthrough in my health. A breakthrough in my emotions. A breakthrough in my mind. A breakthrough in every dimension of my life. Are you ready? Shout and give him praise and glory tonight. If you have your Bible, go with me to Luke's Gospel. I'm going back to where I was on Sunday. Sunday was a powerful day. Children did an incredible job, empowered kids. Incredible time together. Amen. People were saved. People were set free. No greater thing than seeing people saved. No greater thing than seeing people come to Christ. Amen. 
Sunday was awesome, but today's a new day. Luke chapter 2, verse number 7, Luke 2 and 7, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Close your eyes. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. It cannot return void. I thank you that as the word of God is preached, that something's going to happen. Somebody's life is going to be changed. Somebody's body is going to be healed. Somebody's going to be blessed in a special way. Lord, I thank you for those that are watching us online tonight, that they will be refreshed, encouraged, strengthened by the word of God. I thank you that faith is coming alive in every heart as a result of the preaching of the gospel tonight in Jesus' mighty name. Could somebody shout if you're crazy about Jesus? I said if you're crazy about Jesus, let me hear you shout. You may be seated. I want to talk to you tonight about making room for your miracle. Making room for your miracle. Tell somebody, make room for a miracle. The Bible says that when it came time to marry, giving birth to Jesus, that there was no room for them in the inn. Not much has changed in 2,000 years. People still do not have room for Jesus in their life. They have room for everything else. They have room for their career. They have room for family. They have room for their own personal interests. They have room for their business. They have room to work in their own schedule, but they have no room for Jesus in their life. But you need to understand more than ever before, we need to prioritize making room for Jesus and dwelling more in his presence than ever before. Can somebody shout a loud amen? In a world full of chaos and crisis and confusion, we need not to be part and add to the problem. We as God's people are called to be the solution to a sin-sick society. Can you say amen? This world is in trouble. This world is dwelling in darkness. But we are the light of the world. We are a city that is set on a hill. Therefore, let our light shine, the Bible says before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. And I believe that Christmas is an incredible season that we can believe together for miracles. For the greatest miracle ever began, it began when, the, when Mary gave birth to the Son of God. The Bible tells us that there was no room for them in the inn, so Jesus had to be born in a stable. Are you listening to me? But today, we need to make room for God in our families. We need to make room for God in our churches. We need to make room for God in our marriages. We need to make room for Jesus in our businesses. Somebody shout, I'm making room for Jesus. So many people, your life is preoccupied. Your, 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 your heart is filled and your, your schedule is packed like the inn was packed and there was no room for Jesus to be born. But we need to make room for Jesus like never before. Can somebody shout aloud hallelujah. And I believe in this Christmas season, you better listen to me tonight. Because I believe that God is getting ready to perform some incredible miracles in the lives of God's people in the next seven days. This is where my faith is today. As I was praying, the Lord said, I'm going to heal people completely by my power. I'm going to deliver those you've been praying for in this season of miracles. God's about to restore the prodigal. God's about to bring those that are away from God back into the faith. God's about to set children ablaze again. Set them on fire by the power of the Holy Holy Ghost, everybody shout, it's a Christmas full of miracles. Christmas is a season of miracles. Miracles are coming to families. Miracles are coming to people's bodies. Miracles are getting ready to happen in my life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Raise your hands and shout, I'm ready for a miracle. Miracles in my mind. Miracles in my emotions. Miracles in my family. Miracles in business. Somebody shout hallelujah. Some of you have been struggling in an area of your life, but God is going to set you free by his mighty power in this season because God is a God of miracles. Somebody shout hallelujah. The God of the Bible is a God of miracles. Somebody shout aloud, amen. The Bible says that the angel came. 
The angel said, Mary, thou hast found favor with God. I'm in Luke chapter 1, verse 35 through verse 40. The Bible says that as the angel came and said to Mary, you better get ready, girl. You're about to give birth to the Son of God. The Bible says she was agitated and she was confused. She was disturbed because she did not know what the angel meant. And the angel says, you're going to give birth to the Son of God. And Mary goes on to negotiate or deliberate and said, I don't know how that's going to happen. I don't even know a man. But I love what the angel said. He said, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Somebody shout hallelujah. And therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Somebody in this room, somebody that's viewing tonight, you don't know how it's going to happen. You've been believing for a miracle in your life. Somebody got a bad report from the doctor. Somebody's believing for the restoration of a backslidden family. I'm talking about but every one of your family members are backslidden. They're entrenched in sin and they're bound by the devil. And you said, how is this going to happen? Just like Mary said to the angel. He, she said, I don't even know how this is going to happen. And the angel said, first of all, you have found favor. Tell somebody, I found favor. Tell somebody, you better find favor. Found favor with God. And the Bible says that the angel said, not only have you found favor, but it's going to happen by the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Most High God shall come upon thee and overshadow thee. See, people have told you it's not going to happen. People think you're out of your mind when you share your faith and share your love for Jesus. But I'm here to tell you that the Holy Ghost has come upon us and the power of the Most High has overshadowed us and we've got the favor of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody here tonight, you're a miracle. You know you're a miracle. You should have been dead in sin. You should have been dead by the violent lifestyle you led. But Jesus laid his hand on your life. And people look at you and say, how did that happen? You need to turn around and say, the Holy Ghost came upon me. The power of God is on my life. And when I encountered that power, I've never been the same again. I don't live the same. I don't behave behave the same. I don't live in sin. I'm free by the power of the living God. Once Jesus touches your life, you are never the same again. You don't think the same. You don't lie anymore. You're not bound by perversion anymore. You're not an addict anymore. When Jesus lays his hand upon your life, you are never the same again. What happened? We have made room for Jesus Somebody needs to open up your mouth and make room for a miracle. Somebody needs to cry out like blind Bartimaeus. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And the Bible says that Bartimaeus stopped Jesus that day at his praise, his shout, made room for a miracle. I'm here to tell you, your praise makes room for Your shout makes room for your miracle. Your worship makes room for your miracle. That's why he said, I'm looking across the earth for those that will worship me in spirit and in truth. For such as those, the Lord seeks those that will worship him. Somebody shout hallelujah. Open your mouth and shout right now. Open your mouth, you're one praise away. You're one hallelujah away. You're one thank you Jesus away. Somebody, no matter how you feel, open up your mouth, stand on your feet. God is worthy of your praise. And your praise creates a landing strip for the power of God to land. Praise is powerful. Somebody shout hallelujah. You can praise your way out of anything. You can praise your way out of sickness. You can praise your way out of cancer. You're only one praise away. 
Tell somebody I'm only one praise away. Some of you don't believe it. That's why you're void of the power. You haven't seen a miracle in your life in years. But I'm here to tell you, when I preach in other places, people have to have a miracle. A miracle is not an option. It's a necessity. So they do what they're told to do, and they flow in the direction that is given because they're desperate for their deliverance. Somebody shout if you're desperate like the woman with the issue of blood. Somebody shout if you're desperate like blind Bartimaeus. Somebody desperate, open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. If you got to do what Zacchaeus did and climbed a tree, when Zacchaeus climbed a tree, the Bible says that not only salvation came to Zacchaeus, but salvation came to his house. I'm here to tell you, you're only one praise away. You see that? Tell somebody miracles are coming my way this season. Your faith is what obligates God to move. Your faith, everybody say God is obligated to my faith. What is faith? Somebody tell me what faith is. Faith is the ability to believe and hang on when all odds are against you. Faith is the number one spiritual element that still produces a tangible substance. Faith is in faith until it's all you're holding on to. You can't hold on to this and that and the other thing. You cannot have room for foolishness in your life, for compromise, carnality, and sin, and expect God to rule and reign in your life. Can somebody shout hallelujah? But if you're really ready for a miracle, I want you to leap out of your seat and shout, I'm ready for a miracle. I'm ready for a miracle. I'm ready. I'm really ready. I'm ready. I'm overdue for a breakthrough. Somebody shout hallelujah. Lift your hands and praise him on the level you want to receive. Praise him on the level you want to receive. Praise him on the level you want to receive. When you praise, you praise with faith. And you praise and you believe the answer's on the way. Shout somebody right now. You may be seated. Jesus has to be the focus, the focal point of your life. Jesus has to be the centerpiece of your entire existence. Don't be like, as I preached on Sunday, like Herod or the innkeeper or the religious that missed Jesus. They did not know really who he was. They had no room for Jesus. See, in the hour that we're in, we've got to be consumed with Jesus. Jesus on Monday, Jesus on Tuesday, Jesus on Wednesday. Some of you got a hard time coming to church twice a week. What are you going to do when we have church every night, all day long, when persecution breaks out against the church in America? What are you going to do when we're here and we don't leave this building and we're praying around the clock? I feel a prophetic anointing. What are you going to do when we don't leave the sanctuary for weeks on end? Well, what about my house? Well, see, that's your concern. You're, you're consumed with things. You've got to be consumed with Christ. You've got to be consumed with the kingdom of God. Christ has got to be the centerpiece or the focal point of your life. In the Bible, there are 34 distinct miracles. Everybody say 34 miracles. 34 distinct miracles. There are other miracles, but distinct miracles, 34 Incredible miracles in the gospel. In the synoptic gospels, we see Matthew and Mark, Luke and John, we see the miracles of Christ. And then as you study the book of Genesis all the way to the end of the Bible, which is the book of Revelation, you understand that there are countless other miracles that are performed throughout the word of God by God Almighty. So we understand that we serve a God of miracles. So many people today, they do not believe in miracles. But let me tell you something. There will come a day that you will need a miracle and you will have to believe to receive a miracle. I know people that do not believe in miracles. I don't believe, I don't believe personally that you can be a full gospel believer on fire full of the Holy Ghost and you do not believe that miracles are for today. If you do not believe miracles are for today, I have to question your experience. Because once you experience the power of God, it is undeniable. 
That's why you should never be ashamed of your testimony. You should never be quiet about what Christ has done in your life. How many of you in this room have a testimony? Lift your hand if you got a testimony. You have a testimony. Can I see your hand if you got a testimony? How many of you have ever been set free from addiction? Say amen. Delivered from a lifestyle of darkness. Come on, somebody. You've got a testimony. Never be ashamed, the Bible says, of your testimony. We've got to be focused on Christ. I love what Paul said to the church at Corinth. He said this. He said this. He said, I, I, my prayer for you is that you would have an undistracted devotion for the Lord. In un, everybody say an undistracted devotion for the Lord. See, we've got room for everything else. We've got room in our lives for politics. We've got room for success. We've got room for achievements. We've got room for the accolades of man. But we really do not have the room that we should have in our life for Christ. Somebody said, Pastor, why is it that when you go to Haiti and you go to these other places that there's extraordinary miracles that happen? Because people are desperate. Desperate people do desperate things and desperate people that do desperate things receive extraordinary things from the hand of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. I've seen boys that were blind instantaneously healed by the power of God. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about partial blindness. I'm talking about they had to be led into the meeting and led out of the meeting. They come, came like that for several nights, but one night the power of God exploded and blind eyes popped open. Open and deaf ears unstopped. I, I know what it is when I talk about a God of miracles. I've seen people with goiters. Do you know what a goiter is? A goiter is a growth. I've seen cancerous growths in people's throat. And I slapped them by the power of God across their neck. And they would swallow the growth instantaneously healed by the power of God. So if you don't believe that God can perform the miracle in your life, you will not receive a miracle. Because miracles never go where there, the miracles never go only where there's a need. Miracles only manifest where there's an expectation. How many of you are expecting a miracle in your family? I came tonight on an assignment to believe with somebody, join my faith with you that may be watching online, that in this season of Christmas, this is the greatest season of miracles because we celebrate as believers the number one greatest miracle of all of humanity. Humanity, the miracle of our Savior that was born of a virgin. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. So if you're not excited, don't sit next to me because I need people near me and in my environment and proximity to me, in the vicinity of my life, that will believe with me for miracles, signs and wonders, breakthroughs and blessings, unprecedented in this hour. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. See, your praise makes room for your miracle. Now, you can be a theologian and never see a miracle. You can be a modern day Charles Stanley and never see a miracle. It's not what you read. It's what you believe. It's not what you hear. It's what you apply and live that will change your life. I know the greatest teachers and preachers around the world. Many of you know this. This is not bragging. I'm connected to the, some of the greatest ministries in the world. And I don't care how well they preach. It doesn't matter how gifted they are to teach and communicate. If they do not believe in the miracle power of God, they are living below their privilege as a preacher, as a pastor, as an evangelist, I still believe in miracles. I still believe that there's a God that hears and a God that still answers the cries of his people. So don't try to put your doubt and your religion and unbelief on me. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Give Give him praise on your feet all over this house. Get on your feet. What about you? Do you need a miracle? Do you need a miracle in your family? Do you need a miracle in your body? Do you need a miracle in your finances? Well, I don't believe this. 
I don't believe in miracles. You will when you need one, one day. I've had people that have mocked my ministry, have mocked my preaching. When they got hit with a cancer, guess who they called? Because there will come a day, whether you believe it tonight or not, that every one of us will need a miracle from the hand of God. Thank God we serve the God of miracles. God is not dead. He's still alive. He's alive. He's alive. My Savior lives. I know my Redeemer liveth. And because he lives, I can declare that Jesus heals. Jesus still delivers. Jesus still saves. Jesus still sets men free. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Tell somebody, this is your season for miracles. We serve the God of the impossible. We serve the God of the impossible. There's nothing God can do. There's nothing that God can do for you. God is unlimited, the Bible says, in power. The only one that can limit God is you. According to your faith, be it done unto you. Sin can prevent the power of God from manifesting in your life. I've lost people, followers, and people that used to follow my ministry because I told them the truth. Oh, well. I told them, if you want to have the best that God has for you and desires for you to receive, God wants you to be blessed more than you desire to be blessed. Somebody said, when am I going to be blessed? When you learn how to be blessed. When you learn how to practice the principles of the word of God. Somebody said, Pastor, why am I not prospering? Well, the Bible says that if you're lazy, you don't even have a right to eat. The Bible says if you don't provide for your own family, you're worse than an infidel. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says the way you gain increase is by labor. Labor brings increase. Sowing brings increase. Obedience brings the increase. Obedience is the catalyst to all blessings. Somebody shout amen. amen. Somebody shout praise the Lord. You believe in miracles tonight, shout aloud hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why when Jesus healed the sick, what did he say to them? Isaac, George, he said, go and sin no more, lest something worse comes upon you. Go and sin no more. So it's possible to live free from sin, intentional sin. How do I know it's possible? Because Jesus would have never have said, go and sin no more. Jesus is not a liar or a deceiver. We all have faults and shortcomings. But intentional lifestyle of disobedience and sin against God's will for our lives, it is possible to abstain from a lifestyle of sin. He's a holy God. Somebody shout hallelujah. He demands a sanctified life. Somebody shout hallelujah. I was talking to a preacher the other day. Here on the island, he was telling me about a certain preacher that has multiple locations now on Long Island, different churches. When he told me about the pastor, I said, well, I got a friend of mine that's been in that church for some time. And I said his son was in trouble. His son was dealing with a, a real rare disease. I don't even remember exactly what it was, so I'm not going to pretend that I remember. And when he came to the pastor, who has seven or eight churches now on Long Island, throughout Long Island, seeker sensitive, they don't pray in tongues, they don't pray over people in the sanctuary. My friend's son was dying and went to the pastor, who, I, who will remain nameless for now, he said, will you pray for my son? He says, well, I can't pray for him now because we don't do that here. He says, that, I'm just paraphrasing what he said. He said, but if you wait after the service, we'll pray for him in, the, in the, one of the rooms. I think it was a classroom. We'll pray for your son afterward. 
I don't know about you. I'm glad that what Jesus did, he didn't do on a closet. He did on a hill called Golgotha on a cross. He died and paid the price for all the world to see. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And I'm not ashamed of this gospel. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to lay hands on the sick. I'm going to cast out devils. I'm going to confront those false prophets that watch and say that there is not a God of miracles. I'm here to tell you that God is in the miracle working business. If he was able to raise Lazarus from the dead, if he was able to feed 15,000 people with five five loaves and two fish, if he was able to heal the man with the withered hand, if he was able to walk on water, if he was able to open man's blind eyes, Jesus can heal you if you will believe him. Somebody shout hallelujah. All things are possible to them that believe in. So I said to my friend, I said, why would you go to a church like that? Just out of curiosity. Well, they have great kids program. What? They have great kids programs in our heathenistic schools, after school sports. I don't go to church primarily for a good kids program. I go to a church so my spirit is fed. Somebody that can be a watchman over my soul. That can warn me of the impending dangers that are coming in the future. Not to tickle my intellect and tell me what I want to hear, but will tell me what I need to hear in an hour of great darkness. Make room. Do you hear the insanity? They won't pray for my kid that needs a miracle, but I'll go to the church because they have get good kids program. See, I'd rather have the power of God than a program. I'd rather have the word of God preached. I'd rather call a backslidden church back to their first love with Jesus than to go to a church where there's no power, there's no preaching, there's no evangelism. They have great light shows. They have great programs, but they're missing one thing, the power of the living God. But tonight I'm here to tell you, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. That's what my Bible says. I am not ashamed ashamed of the gospel. If you're not ashamed, leap out of your seat and release a roar. I said a roar. A roar to God. A roar of praise to your king. You may be seated. very popular preacher say two months ago that sin does not separate you from God. Now, what's more important, what a preacher says or what the word says? If sin doesn't separate us from God, why did Jesus die on the cross? How many ready for a miracle in your life? How many ready to receive a miracle? You want to know how you can receive a miracle in your life? Number one, confess your sin. Confess your sin. Tell somebody, confess your sin. Oh, you may think you know the person next to you, but you really don't know them. You may see them every service, but you really don't know them. Confess your sin, Psalm 66. Listen to what the Bible says. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. Sin doesn't separate you from God. God doesn't hear you. Do you know the only prayer that God hears from the wicked, the unsaved, the backslidden? I heard somebody the other day that was totally backslidden come up to somebody in my family and say, I know what your family's going through. I know, you, I know you've been going through a hard time. I know you've lost a loved one on earth, but heaven's gain. But I want you to know I'm praying for you. I laughed literally almost in the person's face. I turned away because God does not hear them. 
Go to here, Ben. The only prayer God hears from the backslidden, the ungodly, the sinner, is the prayer of repentance. The psalmist said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, God doesn't hear me. It's also the Bible says those that live in intentional sin should not expect to prosper. The psalmist also said, if I cover my sin, I shall not prosper. Isn't that what the Bible says? Once you come to the knowledge of truth, you are now accountable for that which you've been exposed to. That's why you can't go to the church of your choice. You got to go to a church that challenges you to become not what the preacher wants you to be, but what God has called and created you to be. Somebody shout aloud, amen. amen. How many of you want to become what God has called and created you to be? Somebody say, well, I want to be this, and this is what I want to do. and this is, well, How about what God wants for you? Have you ever checked in with God? Have you ever inquired of the Lord like David in 1 Samuel 30? He inquired of the Lord, 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 what shall I do? When was the last time you asked the Lord, in spite of all the busyness, in spite of all the chaos in your life, Lord, what should I be doing? Of course, God will always bless when you're in his will. Some of you asking God to bless your mess. He's not going to bless your mess. He's going to bless his will. Your life is in trouble. Your marriage is in trouble. Your family is in trouble. Stop living in a fantasy world. Confront it for what it is. Look at it through the mirror of God's word and begin to reflect on the principles and the truths of this word and begin to apply it and make the adjustments where necessary. Remember what I told you Sunday, pride makes excuses, but a spirit of humility makes adjustments. People that are bound by pride, they always got to point the finger at somebody else. Do you ever confront somebody? Do you ever confront those of you that have children? Do you ever confront your child about something? And they say, well, this one does that, or I saw the other kid do that. Or I saw the pastor's kid do that. My father used to give that one a lot about me. <laughs> well, I saw Kevin do that. See, they make excuses because somebody else is just like them. I don't want to be just like everybody else. I want to be what God has called me to be. I want to fulfill God's plan and purpose for my life. I love what Paul said, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith, my course, I want to finish my course, I want to finish my race, I want to accomplish God's assignment, I want to fulfill God's divine destiny for my life. And the only way you can do that is you've got to prioritize the presence of God every day. You've got to make time every day for prayer, make time every day for praise, make time every day for worship, make time every day to meditate on the word of God and the promises of God for your life. Because it's not important about what anybody else thinks about you. It's important what God has created you to be. Amen. Shout amen. amen. Some of you want a miracle. Here it is. Confess your sin, number one. If you want God to hear you, ask for forgiveness before you tell him about the miracle that you need in your life. Number two, recognize that it is God's will to heal you. Say, it's God's will to heal me. Say it with me. It's God's will to heal me. Yeah, it's God's will. The healing chapter of the New Testament. The Bible says that a leper came beseeching Jesus over the rocky mountain sides of Judea. The leper came and says, Jesus, if you're willing, you can make me clean. The healing testament, the healing chapter in the New Testament settled for all humanity. Jesus said, I will be thou made whole. So is it God's will to heal? Talk to me. Is it God's will to heal? 
Does everyone receive healing? No. Is it God's will to heal? Yes, it is. The devil comes to do three things, steal and kill and destroy. But that's not what Jesus came to do. People, my God, just a basic Bible study would do you some good. People come up to me and say, how long have you been saved, brother? Well, I've been saved 40 years. The devil did this to me, and the devil did this to me, and the devil did this to me. And, you know, I don't know why God allowed this to happen in my life. First of all, it wasn't God. It was the enemy that stole from you. God does not steal from his people. God does not put sickness on anyone. Well, I believe the Lord's trying to teach me a lesson. By allowing me to be sick. That's a religious spirit. That's not the word of God. I love what a preacher, Brother Shambach actually. A woman came to him years ago, way before my time with him. Probably back in the 60s or 70s. And the woman said, Brother Shambach, I believe it's God's will for me to be sick. Brother Shambach said, okay, so you're coming for prayer and you believe it's God's will for you to be sick. He said, um, are you taking medication? She said, yes. He said, why are you taking medication trying to get better? Why are you fighting God's will? Does anybody see how insane that is, that theology? It's God's will to heal everyone. Does everyone receive healing? No. I'll be the first one to tell you. Is it God's will? Yes. There's a devil loose. He goes about, the Bible says in 1 Peter and 5, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Can you say amen? That's why we've got to learn to stand firm in our faith. I'm telling you right now, the Bible gives us a promise. For long life shall he satisfy us and show us his salvation. So when you walk around giving glory to the devil, stop talking about what the devil has done. Stop talking about, well, I lose somebody in their 30s and their 40s, and they died and God took them. First of all, God did not take them. The devil took them. It is God's will to heal everybody. Jesus. Jesus healed then, Jesus heals now, and Jesus will heal forevermore. Can somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Malachi said, I'm the Lord God, I don't change. That's what the Bible says. I don't care what you think. It's what the Bible says. Long life. Shall I show you my salvation? You're not going to die young. You're going to live a long life. Well, pastor, you know, it's in my DNA, my genetics. My mother died of cancer. My father died of a heart attack. That curse was broken when you said yes to Jesus. The curse was broken. I'm not going to die of some dreaded disease. Some of you need to get fear out of your heart and allow the faith of God to take root tonight through the preaching of the word in your heart because fear will cause you to live a sick, discouraged, and defeated life. But when you know who you are and you know the victory that was accomplished 2,000 years ago on the cross, you do not live a defeated life. You live a victorious life in Christ. Shout amen or don't shout at all. Okay, let's go quickly. I'm almost done. Number two, again, recognize it's God's will to heal you. Third John says, Beloved, I pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I desire above all things, the word of God says that you prosper. Raise your hands and say, I'm going to prosper. Now, don't say this here and talk something else out there. That's why it's not working for you. 
I got people coming to this altar every week. Pastor, I believe for a miracle. I believe for a miracle. And they go home. How do I know this? Because their spouse has called me. I can't live with this person anymore. All they're talking about is discouragement and sickness and fear. That's why you're sick. That's why you feel like you're losing your mind. God's not bipolar like you. God means what he says and he says what he means. If he says by my stripes you're healed, then you need to stop saying I'm sick and start declaring by his stripes I am healed. It is my covenant right as a child of the living God to live free from sickness and disease. Shout hallelujah. Now, if you don't know the covenant, that's why you're confused. A covenant is only established by the shedding of blood. How many of you are glad Jesus shed his blood that we can enjoy the covenant? And we live under the new covenant, ratified by better promises because of the shed blood of Christ. It's God's will to heal you. It is God's will to heal you. This is not a game. This is not something we do on a Thursday. This is something we have to believe with our entire heart. Say amen. amen. Number three, believe that it's God's will and expect a miracle. Believe that it's God's will and expect a miracle. How many of you believe and are expecting a miracle? Shout amen. amen. There's a lot of people, they believe it's God's will, but they never expect a miracle. How many of you are expecting a miracle in this Christmas season? Now let me tell you the greatest miracle that can happen for you. When you're with your unsaved or backslidden, lukewarm family, let me tell you what you can do. When you're gathering around the table and you're spending time with your family this season, in this season, let this not be another Christmas that you lie to their face. Let this be a Christmas that you sit down with them, take them by the hand, say, you know how much I love you. The greatest thing you could ever do with your life is to surrender it right now to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because without a relationship with Christ, you could claim the holiday, but you can't call it Christmas. People think, well, I'm ready for Christmas. I got all the presents. I got all the cookies ready. I got all everything, the dinner reservations. Listen, that doesn't mean you're ready for Christmas. If this season is not centered around Christ, don't call it Christmas. Just call it another holiday. But I'm so glad that I've received the greatest gift in all the world. And his name is Jesus. Can we give him praise together in the house of God? Can we give him praise together in the house of God? Can we give him praise together in the house of God? How many of you believe it's God's will and that we'll expect and believe for a miracle in this season? See, faith is not just believing that God can. Faith is believing that God is going to do it now. Number four, the healing power of God is always activated by the word of God. The power of God or the healing power of God is activated by the word of God. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, verses 1 and 2, my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life, everybody shout long life. 
raise your hands. I declare long life over everybody under the sound of my voice in Jesus' name. I rebuke and I refute and I renounce and I reject and I cancel every assignment of the enemy over your health, over your mind. There's somebody right now that is battling a suicidal demon. I break it in the name of Jesus and I declare a long life. Clap your hands and shout long life. length of days and long life and peace not just a long life but a long life filled with peace what good is life without peace what good is a long life if it's spent in torment are you with me he says but length of days and long life and peace they'll add to you number five I'm almost there those of you that are believing for a miracle, this is very important. Very important. You cannot earn your healing. You can't earn it. That's what the Catholics believe. You can earn your way to heaven. You can earn brownie points with God. It's not your righteousness. The Bible says your righteousness, our righteousness in sight is as filthy rags. You can't earn your healing. It was already purchased. And it was already provided. Somebody shout amen. amen. You can't earn your healing. It was paid for at the cross of Calvary. Right. Number six, you must learn to act on your faith. Well, I've got great faith. Well, really? When was the last time you exercised it? How many of you know when you exercise your faith, it gets greater, it gets stronger, it develops? Just like when you go to the gym. The more you move the muscle, the stronger the muscle becomes. The more you stretch the muscles, the muscle fibers tear. And when it heals after a few days, the muscle is stronger than it was before. The more you use it, the stronger it gets. The more you develop your faith, the greater your faith will come. become. Somebody say amen. amen. John 5, 8, Jesus told the man at the pool of Bethesda, pick up his bed and walk. Number seven, healing comes on the wings of the Holy Ghost. God the Father wills it. Jesus the Son paid for it. The Holy Ghost brings it. There are two sides of each of us. Each of us have two sides. Say we have two sides. I'm not talking about your husband that's bipolar. Every one of us as human beings, we have two sides. We have the natural side and then we have the spiritual side. Somebody say amen. How many of you are glad you're saved? Your spirit is sealed until the day of redemption. Let me see your hand. But some of you, emotionally, you're a disaster. Naturally, you're a mess. Your mind is all over the place. Your soul needs major healing. I'm so glad there are ministries today in America. While others mock them, they're necessary. Because I know a lot of people that are saved... But they're miserably saved. Their souls are a mess. Their marriages are a mess. Their families are a mess. So there's a balance. You could preach on the supernatural power of God and declare the word of God by faith. But also the Bible says your soul has to prosper. Your soul needs to be restored. Your soul needs to be healed. What good is it as a preacher if you win millions around the world for eternity, but you lose your marriage, you lose your family to the devil? That's what I love what Paul said. God forbid I preach the gospel to the whole world. Paraphrasing, but myself I become a castaway. He's a God. Body, soul, and spirit. You have two sides. You have the natural side and you have the spiritual side. I know a lot of spiritual people in this room, a lot of spiritual people, but I also know a lot of people in this room that need a lot of healing in their soul, a lot of healing in their mind, a lot of healing in their heart, in their emotions. Yeah, you're saved. Yes, you're going to heaven, but God wants you to have the best in every area of your life. He wants you to have good relationships with your children, 
healthy, healthy marriages and relationships. Let me say this to you tonight, those of you that are contemplating relationships, those that are planning on getting married. Let me say this to you, and please hear this with the right spirit. Please receive this. If the person you're dating now is not on fire for God, don't expect them to become on fire for God after you say, I do. It's not going to happen. And all they will be is an anchor around your neck because relationships are either wind to your sails or relationships are anchors around your neck that will pull you down and drown you. I want to become what God has called me to be. Somebody shout amen. amen. And number seven, healing comes on the wings of the Holy Ghost. God the Father wills it. Jesus the Son paid for it. The Holy Ghost produces it. Can you say amen? Somebody said, Pastor, I need a miracle. Well, all you need to do is ask. Close your Bible. All you need to do is ask. What do you need from God? You don't have to beg God for anything. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And the reason why many people, when they ask, they ask amiss because God knows they're going to consume it upon themselves. When you're blessed, God expects you to become a blessing. How many of you received miracles in your life? Can I see your hand? Some of you are on ventilators. I remember I would lift my hand if I were you because God gave you another chance. Lift your hand if you have ever been healed or delivered by the mighty power of God. Now that you've experienced a miracle, God requires you to become a miracle. God wants you to become a miracle for somebody else. There are people out there, people on the train station, people that are out there in Patchogue every week we go to. Our teams go and evangelize and minister the love of Jesus. When you go out and win souls, that's love in action. Everybody say love in action. Somebody said, well, Pastor, I love to win souls. Yeah, but you never do, so I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I don't. I don't believe you. Because what you love, you pursue. What you desire, you chase after. Can you say amen? When I first started dating my wife, I chased her. I pursued her. Why? Because I wanted her. I wanted to marry her. So I, the proof of your desire is found in the things you pursue. People want a career, they pursue that career. People want to educate themselves, they'll pursue greater education. What you desire, you pursue. The proof of desire is always found in the things you pursue. How many of you love Jesus with your whole heart? Clap your hands and give him glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we're here on Thursday. That's why we're here on Sunday. That's why on January the 8th, we're kicking off 21 days of prayer and fasting because this is going to be the year that every chain, every generational curse is going to be broken off of our loved ones and our family. This is going to be the year that your dream is going to come true, that that prophecy is going to manifest, that that word is going to materialize. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And certain things Jesus said will not happen without prayer and fasting. Make room. How many of you have room for Jesus? Now let me just say this to you. Jesus wants to occupy your entire life. Not just when you come to church presence of God that we feel here, you should feel home. My home is my sanctuary. I don't let anything contaminate my sanctuary. How many of you have a place that you pray? Maybe it's your car, I don't know. Maybe it's your office at work, you close the door and you pray and see God during your breaks. But you've got to make room got to make room for Jesus. You've got room for everything else, time for everything else. God has no problem with the things you do. He's got no problem. He has no problem with entertainment, the right entertainment, pure entertainment, vacation, no problem. 
No problem with sports. No problem. I enjoy hunting. No problem with any of that. No problem with getting away for a few days. It's wonderful to enjoy, to enjoy the world that God has created. But here's the problem that God has. You have time for family. You have time for work 80 hours a week. You have time for business. You have time for your interests. You have time for music. You have time to watch sports all day long. But you have no time for me. That's the problem. Priorities. Priorities. What's your priority? My priority, because it's a God mandate on my life, is to preach the gospel. Some of you are called to raise children, to be good mothers, to nurture and raise your family. Fathers called, one of your purpose, one of the purposes of on your life is to provide for your family, to provide financially, to provide food and shelter, a home, protection as a husband, to protect your family, to protect your children. Hear me. This has really been so heavy on my heart all week. Some of you live a very cluttered, cluttered life. You say you have no time for anything else. If you have time for everything else but no time for God, your priorities are all messed up. Jesus has to be the center of everything you do. Christmas Eve, Saturday night, your priority should be, how can I get everybody in my family here? How can I get my friends that are backslid? Kids I go to school with, how can I get them to church on Christmas Eve? And then pray about a strategy and God will show you what to do. New Year's Eve, we're coming together. You know what the Paul the Apostle said, Pastor Chuck? He said it's so important. It's so important, he says, that we all speak the same thing. Everybody say we all speak the same thing. How many of you want 2023 to be the greatest year you've ever had? How many of you believe if we start together and we put God first together, it'll be the greatest year together as a corporate body? Somebody shout amen. amen. So we're coming together New Year's Eve. That's what your pastor's saying we're doing. We're coming together New Year's Eve. And we're going to pray. God's going to command the blessing over the entire year. Nothing else is more important than that. I don't care what you've got planned, cancel it. We're coming together. Pastor said we're coming together and we're declaring the blessing and the word of God over our families on New Year's Eve. And then New Year's Day, Sunday all day, you can lay home in your pajamas with family, but not Saturday night. Christmas morning, Sunday, we've never done this before, I don't think. Sunday all day, you could be with your family because Saturday night, Christmas Eve, we're going to be here in the sanctuary giving praise and glory to our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. Like Isaiah said, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Now, if you have a pastor, you follow and listen to what he says. We're going to be here. Worshiping the Lord in spirit and truth. How many of you need a miracle in your finances? How many of you believe in God for greater in your finances? Well, your giving makes room for a harvest. Yeah. Somebody say, yeah. Your obedience makes room for for the blessing. Where is that in the Bible? Well, the Bible says, Lori, Terrence, Janice, that when Elijah showed up in Zarephath, there was a woman that was about to die with her boy. 
What did Elijah say? What do you have left in your house? And the woman said, I got nothing but just a little bit of oil, just a little bit of meal. Me and my son are going to go eat this last cake. I don't know if I would have gave it. I like cake. I probably would have devoured it right there in front of him. We're going to go eat this last cake and we're going to die. But Elijah said, no, you're not. Give me the last cake. And the Bible says, when she obeyed the instruction from the man of God, something happened. How many are ready for something to happen in the next seven days? Come on, come on, come on. Talk to me. How many are ready for something to happen in the next seven days? How many are ready for something to happen in the next seven days? I'm telling you, you better get ready. By Christmas, there's going to be more than presents under the tree. God's about to heal people of diseases. God's about to deliver children from alcoholism and drug addiction and promiscuity. I'm here to tell you in the next seven days, I feel a shift getting ready to happen in the atmosphere of your family. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I declare that this is going to be a Christmas of extraordinary breakthrough and miracles. Shout amen, somebody. People are going to go back for examinations, and the doctor's going to say, no more cancer. Or do you like the chemo? Of course not. Don't accept what Satan sends. My father used to tell me all the time, he said, never accept it. Once you accept it, you're finished. Pastor Kevin, have you had physical attacks? Many times. I don't accept it. I refuse to accept it. Some of you accept it. That's why you still have it. I'm just telling you the truth. My wife has come under demonic physical attack over the last couple of weeks. We get up, we pray, we rebuke it, we renounce it. And tonight she's in the house of God. Don't accept what Satan sends. If you believe that you are the healed of the Lord, somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. If you believe that the prayer of faith still saves the sick and the Lord still raises you up, give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. It is God's will to heal you. And when you've got faith, you position yourself to receive that miracle from God. get a kick out of some of these preachers. They act like they, they've never been attacked. You know? The reason why you're under an attack is because the devil knows you're a threat. The enemy doesn't attack you when you're not, do, when you're not doing anything. If he's not attacking you, you've never done anything to threaten his kingdom. Somebody shout amen. amen. So Saturday night, Christmas Eve, we're coming together. Souls are going to be saved. New Year's Eve, we're coming together. Souls are going to be saved. Someone said, Pastor, I'm under attack in my mind. I can't sleep at night. The last thing you want to do is miss these services. That's the last thing you want to do if you have any spiritual sense. Because God's going to do something amazing in this hour. God's doing something amazing. I feel it right now. Something amazing. Something unusual is getting ready to happen. I declare seven days of miracles. By the end of this year, you will have the greatest testimony of your life. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody is about to be blessed with land. Somebody's about to be blessed with property. Somebody's about to be blessed in the area of real estate. Somebody's about to be blessed in business. Somebody's about to see an incredible return on an investment. Clap your hands and shout amen. Somebody's getting ready to step out in business. And I'm here to tell you 2023 will be a year that people will work for you and you will be one of the greatest givers and advancers of the kingdom of God in this ministry because God's going to bless you because he knows you have a heart to be a blessing and see people saved, healed, delivered, and experience the amazing love of Jesus. Can everybody stand up and let's give Jesus praise together tonight. So what are you expecting? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You'll
will receive nothing. What are you believing for? Whatever God wants to do. No, be specific. Be specific. Remain standing. When Bartimaeus came to Jesus, Jesus said, Bartimaeus, what do you want? He was specific. Lord, I want to receive my sight. Stop saying, God, do whatever you want to do. Be specific when you pray. Be specific as we get ready to fast and pray on January the 8th. Vision Sunday, January the 8th. It's going to be our strongest year yet. I said it's going to be our strongest year yet. If you're breathing, hear me tonight. God still has an incredible plan for your life. If you're breathing tonight, the greatest days of your life are not behind you. I don't, it doesn't matter the hell you've been through. The greatest days of your life are ahead of you. That's what faith speaks. <laughs> Calling those things that are not as though they were. Somebody here tonight, since your childhood, you've been battling with an infirmity since you were a child. I want you to come to me. I want to pray for you. You've been struggling with something since you were a child. I want you to come. And I want you to come quickly before I move on. You've been battling in an area of your body since you were a child. Come. Quickly come. Some form you've been struggling. God wants to heal you. I will, not, I will not wait. I will not extend the service. Either you move or you don't move. It's up to you. Some of you, it's, it's, I believe it's in the bones. Somebody with the bones. Since you're a child. Who is that? Who is that? Who is that? I feel it in my spirit. Who is that? Stiffness in the bones, in the joints. Since you were a teenager. Who is that? Maybe it's somebody online. I don't know. I command you to be healed in the mighty name of Jesus right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody here also. Is that you? What the heck is taking you so long? Don't you know I'm hungry? In Jesus' name, Lord, touch my precious sister. Since you're 16? Yep. She said, I've been struggling with this since I'm 16. How many of you know the Holy Ghost doesn't miss it? In the name of Jesus, I rebuke and I break this curse off her health that she has struggled with all her life. Lord, I pray right now for complete freedom from all infirmity, from this ailment, from this issue. In Jesus' mighty name, Jesus' mighty name, be healed. Receive it. Receive it now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray in the Holy Ghost, people. Pray in the Holy Ghost, people. Close your eyes and pray for somebody else. Close your eyes and pray for somebody else. Sister Attractor, lift your hands all the way in the back. God has heard your cry for your children. And the Lord said, before you leave this world, you will see the fruit from your prayers and your years of sacrifice and labor for God. For the Lord says, legacy shall continue. And that which he was even spoken over your womb as you were carrying those children, the Lord says, not one word shall fall to the ground. And I declare that every one of them shall serve the Lord completely on fire for him in this last hour. In the name of Jesus, somebody pray in the spirit.
Those right now tonight, you want to be completely free forever from all addiction. I want you to come quickly to the front. Quickly. Don't talk to nobody but God. Talk to nobody but God. You want to be completely free from addiction. Come forward now in Jesus' name. Completely free. Completely free. Some of you are bound by pornography. The Lord is going to set you free. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands all the way up to heaven. Both hands high. Lift them to heaven. When I touch you, the Lord is going to touch you. When I lay hands on you, the power of God is going to surge through you. In the mighty name of Jesus, everybody lift your hands. There are others that need to come. Some of you are addicted to fear. You live on fear. Fear has paralyzed you. But the Lord wants to set you free and set you on fire that you live a life full of faith, not a heart full of fear. What you fear the most, Job said, will come on you. People are addicted to bad news. Get addicted to the Word of God and you live a life of peace and happiness. Set them free tonight. By the power of the living God, I break every spirit of death. I cancel every assignment of the enemy. I claim his soul for heaven in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for setting him free tonight by your mighty power. He shall not die. He shall live. He shall not die. He shall live in the name of Jesus. Lord, I seal the spirit. I seal this word that I preach tonight. And even the prayer I'm praying now, I command the devil's power and the influence of the wicked to cease in Jesus' name. I pray now for a holy desire and a hunger for righteousness in, this, in his life. In Jesus' name, set him free by the power of the living God. 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 I command them to serve the Lord all the days of their life. All the days of their life. They shall not go back to addiction. But they shall go ahead into their inheritance. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. No more devil. The enemy has stolen years from your lives. No more. No more. No more. In Jesus. Lord, I lift your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. I want young men that are full of the Holy Ghost to join me up here and pray for these men that are here. Surround them. Every man in this room that's full of the Holy Ghost. Come quickly. All men that are full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, put your hands on their shoulders. Surround them in love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give us men full of the Holy Ghost. Send men to this church that are full of the Holy Ghost. Use every one of these men in this last day, Lord, for your glory and your honor and your praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare over every life here tonight, you'll never be the same. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's a miracle some of you men are even living. 
after all the years of abuse and addiction. Maximize this moment. Never forget what the Lord has done in your life. I command you to be completely free in this season of your life for the rest of your life. I speak long life. I rebuke spirits of death. Get off of these men. Get off of them tonight. Get off of them tonight. Spirits of death and destruction. Go from them. Never come back. It is done. It is done. I want you guys to look at me for a moment. As much as you prioritized the life you once lived, you were consumed with it. Now you have to be consumed with God. Of course, if you do not fill yourself and fill your life with God and make Jesus number one, you will always go back. But once you experience the power of God, you'll never be the same again. Never be the same again. People that go backwards and in and out of addiction, they don't want to be free. Because Jesus said, whom the Son sets free, is free indeed around this room. Turn around for a minute. Turn around and face the people. How many of you out there are ex-addicts or alcoholics? Would you lift your hands? Come on, lift your hands. Get rid of your pride. Lift your hands. You're an ex-something. Lift your hands. If Jesus, guys, listen, if Jesus can do that for them, he can surely do it for you. Somebody give God praise. You guys could go back to your seats. Give them a hand of encouragement as they go. The woman of Zarephath, she received a miracle. She made room for a miracle when she obeyed the instruction. The Bible says she, he, her, the prophet, her son, they ate for many days during the famine. Some of you don't believe it, but you need to listen to me. There is a famine coming to America. And those that live for God shall not lack anything. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor God's seed begging for bread. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Some of you don't have no clue what's getting ready to happen. No clue. You think it's just something your preacher preaches. These things are coming upon the earth. But the people of God will be untouched and will be blessed all the days of our lives. I love what David said. He says, the shelves may be bare, but God's people shall have more than enough. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give God praise and give him glory now. Close your eyes. What are you expecting? What kind of a harvest are you believing for? What are you trusting God to do in this season of your life? I want you to sow a seed tonight. Just obey the Lord. Just simply obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Father, now speak to your people. Those that are believing for harvest. Speak to them the seed to sow. As Elijah spoke to the woman, as she obeyed, she made room for the miracle. Also, the other woman, she built a room on her house for the prophet. When she made room for the prophet, God made room for her. Her son died, and the prophet raised her son back to life again. Because when you make room for God, God always has room for you need an envelope, lift your hands. Quickly, ushers. Quickly. More than, well, we have more than two ushers. Can we have every usher help? This is very, very easy. It's 
not really complicated. If you need an envelope, just lift your hand. Those online, sow your seed into the fertile soil of this soul winning ministry. Saturday, there'll be evangelism at 12 noon, or is it 11.30? 11.30, Hog. If you want to see souls saved, the place to be is the train station in Hog. Saturday at 11.30. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We love you. We pray you were blessed as we were. Don't forget to tune in Sunday morning, 11 a.m. It's going to be an amazing time together. Good night, wherever you are. Welcome, Pastor Olga, as she comes. When you're ready to give your offering, sow your seed. All the ways to give are on the screen. We love you. Thank you for being obedient. I believe you were blessed by today's message. Olga and I would love to connect with you. If you're ever in the Long Island area, why don't you come check us out right here at the place where miracles happen, J-I-L-C. Also, come and experience the power of God in any one of our weekly services every Thursday. 7 p.m., also Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. If you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear from you. Join our faith with you. Believe for a miracle and breakthrough in every area of your life. You can email your prayer request to prayer at jilc.org. Also, exciting news. What an announcement. Brand new app. We just finished it. You can download it today. Jesus is Lord Church in Holtzville. Until next time, I'm Pastor Kevin McGinnis. I am believing for your miracle.